This tutorial will demonstrate how to combine Ray TK scenes with traditional SOP based rendering using depth compositing. Start by dropping the toolkit talks into your project. I'm going to be using version 0.20, but earlier versions should also have what's needed for this tutorial. There is a download link in the video description. And you'll need to use one of the stable versions of Touch Designer. The experimental Vulkan based versions are not yet compatible with RayTK, and hopefully that will be resolved soon. Start by opening the palette using the Alt-R shortcut, and then create a Raymarch Render 3D. Then create a box frame SDF. and connect it to the first input on the renderer. And you can add a null top to the end so you can see the output. Now for preview purposes, I'm going to set the resolution on the renderer to 1800 by 1400, but feel free to use whatever resolution you want. On the renderer, you can also switch off shadows since we aren't going to be needing those, and it will save a bit of performance. Next, create a plain SDF. And a combine. And connect both of the SDFs to the first two inputs on the combine. And then connect the combine to the first input on the renderer. On the plane, set the offset to negative 0.5. And then on the box frame, I'm going to set the Y scale to 1.3. And on the combine, we're going to set the blend mode to smooth union and set the radius to 1. Now that we have the Ray TK scene set up, we're going to create some traditional SOP based geometry that we can combine it with. Create a file in SOP and add a null SOP to the end. Then on the file in SOP, select the teapot example file. Now this teapot model includes a floor plane as well as the teapot part. So we're going to get rid of that using a delete SOP. On the bounding volume tab, switch on use bounds. And for the size, use 5, 1, 5. And for the center y-axis, use negative 0.5. And that cuts off a little bit of the bottom of the model, but for our purposes here, that's okay. Next, we're going to scale and shift it a bit so that it fits in our scene. Create a transform SOP and insert that between the delete and the null. On the post page for all three axes, set this post translate to origin. So that's going to center it. Then on the post scale, set that to unity to fit it to a zero to one range. We're now going to create another transform. Insert that after the first one. And use that to shift it so that the center of that teapot is on the Y axis isn't quite lined up yet. So for translate in the x-axis, we're going to set that to 0 0.03 and then shift it up a bit to 0 0.5 and then set the uniform scale to 2. Create a geometry comp 
attached to the null sub. In the rotate y parameter of the comp, we're going to add an expression abs time dot seconds times negative 10, and that'll give it some motion. Create a fong mat and drag that onto the material property of the geometry comp. Set the diffuse to 1, 0 0.7, and 0 0.2. That'll give it a color that'll help it stand out against the rest of the scene. Now that we have the geometry set up, we're going to create a renderer that matches the Raymarch renderer that we already have. So create a render top. We're going to need both of these renderers to match. So on the Raymarch renderer, take the resolution parameter, copy that, and on the render top, paste that onto its resolution using reference. To get this renderer working, we're going to need to set up a camera. But we need that camera to match the camera that's being used for the RayTK renderer. So open the RayTK palette and create a linked camera. And attach that to the second input, the camera input on the RayMerge renderer. Linked camera is a way to connect a RayTK camera with a regular camera that can be used with a render top. Now you can take any camera comp and attach it to the linked camera, but it also has these shortcut buttons that will create a new camera and attach it. We're going to use the first one here, which creates a camera viewport from the touch designer palette. This gives us some improved mouse control but you can also use create basic camera, which just creates a regular camera comp. Then to attach the new camera to the render top, drag it onto the render top's camera parameter. Then on the camera viewport, we're going to drag the render top onto its render top parameter which it uses for the preview in the panel. Now it also needs a panel comp, and by default it has this internal one, but to have this panel in the side here, I'm using a panel that I've already set up, but you won't need to do that unless you're using a similar layout. Now you can use the mouse in the viewport here, to move the camera around. And because I'm also using the separate panel, you can also use the mouse in there. Now if we zoom in to the render top, we can see that it is also controlling the camera for that renderer. Next, we're going to set up a light. And to do that, we're going to use a similar operator to the linked camera, this one called linked light. So create one of those and attach it to the third input, the light input on the Raymarch renderer. Similar to the linked camera, it has a shortcut to create and attach a light comp. So we use that. And then the render top is going to recognize that because by default it uses all the lights in the current network. If you move that light around, you'll see that it is affecting both the Raymarch renderer and the render top. We're going to add a bit of animation to the light using a SOP based path. So set the translate back to zero. 
then create a circle sop, followed by a transform, and a null at the end. Then drag this null onto the path parameter of the light comp. Then on the circle, set the primitive type to NURBS curve and the plane to ZX. Then on the transform, set the translate Y to 1.4 and the rotate Z to 20 to give it a bit of a tilt. Then on the light comp, you can use the position parameter to move it along that path, which does a little loop around the scene. To give that some motion, we can use an expression like abs time dot seconds divided by 10. So now it, the light will slowly move around the scene. Now that we have both renderers set up, we're going to combine them. So on the Raymark render, drag the render top onto its render top parameter. Then we're going to switch on use render depth. And what that does is when the Raymark renderer is sending rays through the scene, it uses the depth from the render top to check whether array has gone past something that would block it from the render top. And for those pixels, it just treats those as blank. Then you can switch on the overlay render setting, which takes the image from the render top and for all the places where that would be in front of the Ray TK scene, it uses those pixels instead. So to recap, we're using some SDFs with a Raymarch renderer, and that renderer is using a linked camera, which has an attached camera viewport component, which is then being used in the render top. Similarly, we set up a linked light connected to the Raymarch renderer, which has an attached light comp that the render top is using. We then reference that render top from the Raymarch renderer's render top parameter. And we switched on use render depth, which uses the render top's depth to know when parts of that are in front of parts of the Ray TK scene. And we switched on overlay render so that it would use that depth to combine the two images. So I look forward to seeing what you all create with this. And if you have any questions or suggestions, you can either leave comments here or message me on Instagram or Facebook or in the Ray TK channel in the Touch Designer Discord. And check the video description for links to all of those. And remember to add the Ray TK tag to your post to make sure that we all see your work. Thanks for watching and see you next time.